Diamond Mind is a was actually a radio uh, introduction, an introduction to a radio show in the 1960s by this guy named Dave Diamond. And he's a genius. He's like this mad psychedelic genius. He wrote this thing. It's like a minute and a half. It never stops. It's like the, if the guy from Dragnet took LSD, you know, if Joe Friday from Dragnet took acid, this is what he would sound like. And uh, I always wanted to, I always wanted to just somehow record it myself, just to speak it. And I found it on the internet. I found the actual transcript, which I didn't think was possible. So um, one night I was just going through my phone at the studio recording another song, found the transcript to Diamond Mine and asked Bob, uh, my co-producer, Bob Pantella, to hook me up with a mic and let me record it. Let me just go in and start saying it. So it wasn't supposed to be on the record, but after I had finished doing it, I realized this would be the perfect way to start the record off with this psychedelic scream. I don't do it as quite as good as Dave, but it's pretty good. Born to Go by Hawkwind is, uh, it's one, I, it's one of my favorite songs ever. It's the song that they used to start off their show with back in the, the ancient times when I was a kid. You know? So I saw Hawkwind when I was I think, 14 years old in New York City on 14th Street in uh, the early 70s. And it was a different world back then. And the Hawkwind didn't sound like anybody else. I mean, everybody else was pretty, there was Sabbath and there was heavy bands. There was obscure heavy bands, but nobody really played it was hard to see those kind of bands, even back then, you know. Uh, but Hawkwind came right into New York City and they came on and they played the song Born to Go. And it was like the Ramones or something, but like a heavy rock Ramones, and this is before Ramones. And they're just screeching about, uh, we were born to go to the heart of the sun. I couldn't understand what they were saying. They were saying all these cool words, um, chasing all, all of our dreams into reality. Uh, they were playing science fiction movies in the back while, while, the, while the band played. They had a six foot tall, almost completely nude dancer woman on stage named Stacia, who's still alive, by the way. And she was gorgeous and she was naked and uh, like practically naked. And they're in a room of like 3,014 to 18 year old, mainly male audience, like prog rockers or heavy metal guys and hippies, sit there with their jaws open, saying to themselves, probably, this is what I was born to do, to watch this band play Born to Go while a light show went on and a half naked woman dancing <laughs> around. It was like an adolescent's dream. That's why I like Born to Go. Epitaph for a head is, uh, is just sheer psychedelic insanity. It's rage, really. Um, I don't think the song is more than two minutes long. Um, I never really found out the history of who did it. J.D. Blackfoot. I looked it up. He's evidently he's still alive. He's a country singer now or something. But there's almost no information. And I can't understand what... It's one of the reasons why I like all the songs on, this, on on a better dystopia. I don't really know where these guys are coming from, the lyrics, which is great. But at one point he says, he says something like, uh, doctors running, people shouting, trying hard to see a flat metallic object in the crosshairs over me. So a flat metallic object in the crosshairs over me seems to be like some sort of UFO. That's the best I can get at. Aside from that, he's just wailing the whole song. And it's insane because it's got all these weird stops and starts, has no ending, and just goes away in two minutes. So, uh, when I close the other's two foot open. 